Indeed, all praise belongs to Allah. We praise Him, seek His assistance, and ask His forgiveness. We seek refuge with Allah from ills of our own souls and ill consequences of our actions. If Allah guides any person, none can lead that person astray. And if Allah leaves any person to stray, none can guide that person. I testify that there is none worthy of worship except Allah alone, without any partner. And I testify that Muhammad is Allah's worshipping servant and messenger. People who accept and comply with the truth from Allah, do your utmost to protect yourselves from Allah's punishment by fulfilling His commands and avoiding His prohibitions, and do not die except submitting to Allah and Islam. Mankind, protect yourselves from the punishment of your Lord who created you from a single person, and from that one person created his spouse, and then spread from the two of them multitudes of men and women, and protect yourselves from the punishment of Allah, by whom you make requests of one another, and do not sever ties of kinship. Indeed, Allah is always watchful over you. People who accept and comply with the truth from Allah, protect yourselves from Allah's punishment, and speak words that are correct. If you do so, Allah will set your deeds right for you, and He will forgive your sins for you. And when any person obeys Allah and His Messenger, that person will certainly achieve the greatest success. My dear audience, Allah indeed honored the descendants of Adam, carried them upon land and sea, provided them with many wholesome things, and favored them greatly over many others whom He created. He also prescribed for them precise rights and clear responsibilities that are not found in such a fulfilling manner in any set of teachings besides those of Islam. This is because the honor that Allah granted is in a text of the Qur'an that has come from the most wise and all acquainted. It was not something devised by human nature, which is prone to shifting emotions and always remains imperfect. Anyone who carefully examines his own state with sound understanding can grasp that the directives of Islam preceded and outdid any regulations people devised to raise human morals, to raise human morals and protect their rights. It could never be otherwise in light of the fact that Islam is the religion that Allah Himself prescribed, as well as the fact that it is the innate disposition that Allah created all people with, and there is no religion that could be better than that disposition and religion that Allah implanted within the souls of all people. Hudayfa, may Allah be pleased with him, had said, the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, delivered a sermon to us in which he left nothing unmentioned all the way until the hour of resurrection taken place. Some retained what he said, while others did not. This was collected by Abu Khari and Muslim. Servants of Allah, part of that is the rights to which all people are entitled. Those which were stressed by the Prophet of God and mercy, may Allah grant him commendation and protection. In his statement, indeed, your blood, your properties, your dignity, and your skins are all inviolable to each other, just like the inviolable, just like the inviolability of this day of yours, in this month of yours, in this land of yours. This was collected by Bukhari. And that remark, the Prophet, may Allah grant him commendation and protection, placed very clear and stern emphasis on the inviolability of blood which entails protecting a person's life as well as what is less than that. The inviolability of skin, which entails protecting the body and all its limbs. The inviolability of property, which entails protecting any small or large amount of a person's possessions. And the inviolability of dignity, which includes protecting a person from adulterous acts, homosexual acts, slander, and other such things. Violating any of the aforementioned realms about a person is a very, is very strongly prohibited. And it is not permissible for a Muslim to violate any of them when it comes to any brother of his in Islam. Servants of Allah, with that being the case, it should be recognized that there is a phenomenon that some communities have been tested with. Its harms have extended in numerous ways, and attempts to contain it have been made by various groups concerned with rights, treaties, policies, and penalties. Efforts have been made to contain its spread and dry out its roots, but it has not been completely extinguished as yet, and it still echoes in the ears of diseased souls. What we are referring to is the phenomenon of 
human trafficking and what could ever make you understand the reality of what human trafficking actually is. In our time, there is a vast heaving ocean of manifestations of transgression against the rights of others, including recruiting, transporting, sheltering, or receiving individuals, and doing those by way of methods like threats, violence, coercion, deception, exploiting their poverty, exploiting one's own position, giving or receiving bribes, and other methods as well related to exploitation. Servants of Allah, although human trafficking includes buying and selling, it is wider in scope than those. Human trafficking has many levels. The gravest of them is doing anything that amounts to taking a life that is not to be violated. And the least of them is exploiting the innocent to achieve aims that have nothing to do with them. It is indeed repugnant to climb upon the shoulders of the innocent in order for oneself to rise up to some sort of worldly gain at the expense of their intellect, dignity, properties, lives, or loved ones. Trade on its own is something respectable in a general sense, but its worst manifestation is trade that takes the form of human trafficking. On top of that, nothing is more repulsive than seeking to traffic them during crises that communities face. When their authorities are occupied with working to avert working to avert those crises. Servants of Allah, this should be nothing surprising since there are burglars who do their pilfering regarding people's selves during crises just as there are burglars who do their pilfering regarding people's possessions and homes. Human trafficking is a black market that corrupts and does not set anything right. It is closer to laundering illegal money than it is to circulating legal money. It is reprehensible. It is a reprehensible system that robs the weak of their rights and freedoms by exploiting their ignorance. That allows a trafficker to manipulate them as if they were slaves. If traffickers ever had a moment of sound-mindedness when they actually thought about the harms of what they do, they would not even take a step towards it or extend a hand in its direction. Abu Mas'ud al-Badri, may Allah be pleased with him, stated, I had physically disciplined a slave I owned using a whip. I then heard a voice behind me. And when it came closer, I realized that it was Allah's messenger. May Allah grant him commendation and protection. And he was saying, Abu Mas'ud realized that Allah is even more capable of doing what he wants with you than you are regarding this slave. I replied, Messenger of Allah, I free him, seeking the face of Allah, the most exalted. He then said, Had you not done that, the hellfire would have burned you. Or he said the hellfire would have touched you. This was collected by Muslim. Servants of Allah, human trafficking comes in a variety of forms that share the common root of exploiting an aspect of weakness that the victim has. This then leads to exploitation for aims such as drug cultivation, financial blackmail, emotional blackmail, and organ harvesting. Trifling gains are made at the enormous expense of the victims. Similar can be said for instances when trafficking involves people's dignity. And there are many victims of this category. They include workers who come to various communities from abroad. And they end up being exploited for cover-up operations that yield financial gains but are illegal. Another instance is trafficking that involves giving promises of prosperity by way of migrating to particular lands. And in the process of reaching such destinations, many risks are taken and fears are encountered. After having paid the traffickers and broken laws that govern boundaries and borders, no less of a crime is trafficking that involves urging people towards destructive aims by deceiving them into serving aims of the traffickers related to various ideologies, as well as to compromising security. Even though there may be no tangible financial gains made, the harms caused related to security, society, and thought are greater than those related to illegal financial profits. Although Islam does not specifically use the term trafficking in its texts, 
it does explicitly outline the prohibition of many acts that constitute that crime. Anyone who examines the objectives of Islam's teachings can find that they oppose human trafficking, even if, even though they do not name it with those words. The following are a few instances. By way of brief example, not an exhaustive list. There is the prohibition of exploiting women for financial gains. Allah the Most Exalted said, And do not force female slaves you may own to engage in prostitution, although they themselves desire chastity. Do not do such a thing in order to make a gain for yourselves in the life of this world. Ibn Kathir commented in his tafsir that during the era of ignorance prior to the advent of Islam, if a person had a female slave, he would let her go about and fornicate and then take a percentage of what she made. When Islam came, Allah's directives prohibited that. Servants of Allah. Another example is the prohibition of exploiting a person in debt while he is still experiencing difficulty. Allah said, If someone to whom you have given a loan is unable to repay it, then allow him more time until it becomes feasible for him to pay it back. However, if you are charitable towards him by waiving some or all of the loan, that would be even better for you. During the period of ignorance prior to Islam, if the time for the debtor to repay the creditor came, the creditor would tell him, you either repay me now or you repay me later with interest. Servants of Allah, another example is the major level of care that Islam gave to the issue of slavery by greatly restricting the circumstances under which a person could end up enslaved and also greatly expanding the scope of emancipating slaves. Allah indeed spoke the truth in his statement, People of Iman, you must not take the property of anyone else when you have no right to do so. However, you may take or use the property of others when there is trade between you by mutual consent. Furthermore, you must not kill yourselves or others. Indeed, Allah is always merciful to you. I say this much and I beseech Allah to forgive myself as well as all of you. He's indeed the most forgiving, the bestower of mercy. All praise belongs to Allah alone, and may He grant commendation and protection to His final Prophet. Servants of Allah, you must continue to observe taqwa of Allah. You must also realize that it is necessary for all, whether governments, rights organizations, collectives, and individuals, to work towards restricting the opportunities that can be used by human traffickers and vigilantly remain on guard against them. There are people who tread upon the weak to raise themselves, attain light by burning them, and become rich by their poverty. Such individuals must not ever be cooperated with, and their crimes must not be left unmentioned. Helping them and remaining silent about them are forms of cooperating in sinfulness and transgression as well as taking people's property without any right. Something else to be mentioned in this regard is appreciation for the fact that the land of the two holy mosques, the kingdom of Saudi Arabia, may Allah protect it, completely outlaws all forms of human trafficking. This is done by an integrated system of policy making, combating, and being part of treaties that oppose this terrible crime. The nation has tangible global standing in this area, and this is due to no reason besides its prior stances that bolster its, its Islamic identity, along with the fact that it is, it is the land that contains a direction to which all the people of Islam turn when they pray. Something else that is also not far from this topic is our refraining from being part of particular agreements and accords on terms pertaining to contentious gender identities and inclinations, ones that oppose the basic principles of our religion and its directives. All of that is due to the nation's affiliation to Islam since the time of the nation's inception three centuries ago. It grew while yielding to a path of moderation that remains balanced. It does not go 
to either the extreme of excessiveness or that of negligence. Allah brought together in it what had previously been divided, gave it the light of knowledge and sound unwavering beliefs, erased from it the darknesses of ignorance and misguidance, and eliminated from it internal fighting and boycotting. As a result, travel routes were made secure and its regions were united such that they became one single consistent fabric. Its laws state that its governance is drawn from the Book of Allah, the Most Exalted, and the Sunnah of His Messenger. May Allah grant Him commendation and protection. Those two extend to cover all of the nation's policies. Additionally, out of Allah's grace, the nation has been honored with serving the two holy mosques, developing them, caring for them, and making it feasible for people to reach them. The nation sees those things as binding obligations that it must fulfill by virtue of its affiliation to the brilliant religion of Islam. And it sees fulfilling those roles to be an enormous honor. Servants of Allah, this should come as no surprise in light of the fact that the highest title that crowns our leaders is for one of them to be called the custodian of the two holy mosques. This is a nation that extends its hand to those who want to shake it in friendship. And its eye is not heedless towards those who scheme against it and seek to attack it. Throughout the nation's three historical phases, its leaders have striven to ward off from it the plans of those who scheme against it, the plots of those wishing to attack it, and the malice of those who are hostile towards it. We praise Allah for the fact that it has remained protected from the ills of infighting and chaos, which hostile, which, which hostile miscreants seek to incite. They harbor an attitude of plotting against lands of people who submit to Allah and Islam, whether in eastern or western parts of the earth. However, by Allah's grace, our lands have remained strong in the face of such hostility. With every leader whose time of departure came, another one succeeded him in caring for the nation and defending it. Their state is like what is mentioned in Arabic poetry to the effect that when any leader of the collective departs, Another stands, and he remains consistent in saying and doing what is said and done by people of integrity. The exploits of the collective are well known to its opponents, and it has the it has the prominent it has a prominent feature of distinction by which it is recognized. May Allah grant continued protection to this nation against the plots and schemes of the hostile, and may he bless it and all other lands of those who submit to him in Islam with continued safety and security. He indeed hears our prayers and he responds. O oh, Allah, grant your commendation and protection to your worshipping servant and messenger. O oh, Allah, grant strength to Islam and those who submit to you in Islam. O oh, Allah, relieve the distress and suffering of the Muslims who are afflicted, settle the debts of those who are in debt, and heal our ill and all the ailing Muslims. O Allah, grant us safety in our nations, and make our leaders individuals who are righteous. O Allah, ever-living, self-sufficient, sustainer of all, guide our leaders to the words and deeds which you love and are pleased with. O Allah, God our leader and his aids to all that you love and are pleased with. O oh Allah, none has the right to be worshipped except you. You are rich in every way, whereas we are always in dire need of you. O oh Allah, we beseech you to send rain for us. O oh Allah, we beseech you to send rain for us and not make us end up among those who lose hope. O oh Allah, send rain for us and do not let us end up among those who use hope. Our Lord, grant us good in this world. Grant us good in the hellfire and protect us. Our Lord, grant us good in this world. Grant us good in the hereafter and protect us from the torment of the hellfire. And Allah has complete knowledge of everything that you do.